SCRA, or Single Channel Radio Access, is designed to provide mobile communications across the battlefield. It has a wide range of facilities that includes secure duplex or two-way voice communication, telegraph for reports and returns, facsimile for distributing more complex information, and data communications to speed up command, control and system management. But SCRA is just one part of the Ptarmigan trunk network. Users of the system enjoy complete freedom of movement throughout the area of operations. At the heart of the Ptarmigan system lies a series of computer control switches, or trunk nodes, which are connected by multi-channel radio relay links. But it's the variety of routes between these nodes that ensures survivability. Between any two nodes in the system, there'll be a number of different routes. Route selection for calls depends on channel capacity and availability. Built-in spare capacity or redundancy means that in combat the system can withstand damage yet still support the same number of subscribers. Let's imagine a situation where two nodes are communicating. During the battle, one of the nodes on the route is destroyed. The beauty of the system is that it will automatically find you another route. The system can cope even after losing up to half of its trunk nodes. Apart from battle damage, several of these nodes will be out of the system while they're moving or held in reserve. The Ptarmigan trunk system is an effective network that provides communications throughout the entire area of operations. This means that the location of formation headquarters is no longer restricted by its communications. The key element in Ptarmigan is the user. But how do they access the system? Large groups of static subscribers, like those at 1BR core headquarters, get in through major access nodes that are housed in four-ton box body vehicles. Smaller groups of static subscribers, like those at divisional and brigade headquarters, get in through secondary access nodes. Again, they're housed in four-ton box bodies or armored track vehicles. But it's you, the mobile subscriber, we turn to next. A thorough grasp of SCRA will ensure you get the most from the system. Mobile users get into Ptarmigan through an SCRA central. Centrals are connected to trunk nodes by cable or radio relay link and act as concentrators for up to 25 subscribers. Not all can make a call simultaneously. It'll only allow 11 users access at any one time. The remainder, though not able to call, are still supported by the system. Like all other types of radio equipment, SCRA has its limitation. The vehicle-mounted antenna will give you a range of about 15 kilometers. So if you're not on the move, then you should use your elevated antenna. This will extend your range up to 30 kilometers. The careful management of centrals is essential to give you, the mobile subscriber, the best possible service. Centrals are sighted across the area of operations in such a way that mobile subscribers anywhere can access the system. Consider a scenario where you're a mobile subscriber connected or affiliated through a central to Ptarmigan. If you go out of range or are screened by the terrain, you'll lose contact. What you'll then need to do is reconnect or reaffiliate yourself into the system through another central. During a battle, it's possible that some centrals may be destroyed. Despite the loss of a central, the system is designed to give you access back into Ptarmigan as quickly as possible. Vehicles fitted with SCRA are easily identified by their distinctive antenna. But what are the other parts of the installation? Firstly, there's the TXRX, or transmitter receiver, which is controlled by the CIG, or control indicator group. Power is supplied to the terminal by 28 volt DC cable, and a coaxial cable connects the terminal to the antenna. A multi-core cable connects the TXRX to the CIG. To communicate, you'll also need a headset or handset. And finally, a PTD, or Portable Transfer Device. Installation of the equipment is relatively simple. 
But what's most important is that you follow the correct setting up procedure. Many problems that users experience are caused by poor connections. So it's always good practice to make sure that all cables are properly connected. To power the set, turn the TX-RX power switch to the on position. All being well, the white light should come on. Try if you can to give the set 15 minutes to warm up. To check that the test lamp is working, press the test button. It's important that you check that the transmitter element of the TX-RX is working properly by holding the test switch up until the green lamp comes on. It might take up to four seconds. And then down for the receiver test. It's essential that you carry out these checks before setting up the CIG. Make sure that the mode switch is set to normal before doing anything else. Then switch the CIG on which should make the contact, status and call lamps light up and you should hear the PTD absent tone. Next, load your PTD which contains a cryptographic fill that makes the system secure and provides you with a unique electronic identity. Having loaded your PTD, make sure that it's properly fitted by tightening the securing ring. After several seconds, the contact and call lamps will go out and the PTD absent tone will cease. You're now ready to contact a central by firstly switching to load. At this point, you'll need to enter a CTN or central transmission number, which will put you in contact with a local central. Turn the mode switch on the CIG back to normal. And you should notice that the contact light comes on, but may well flash before staying on as it searches for the central. Having contacted a central, you'll need to affiliate to gain access to the Tarmigan system. Go off hook. Be patient as it could take up to two minutes before the call lamp lights and you get dial tone. Go back on hook and your terminal's affiliated. But how do you choose the central that will give you the best service? To help you, exercise areas are divided into SSAs or subscriber service areas. Each area is identified by a letter. Each letter corresponds to a particular CTN. For example, a mobile user in the Hanover area would be in SSA D and his CTN would be 146. It's a simple method to follow. Getting into the Ptarmigan system is usually a straightforward process but during a battle, or even an exercise, gaining access may not be that simple. SCRA has a number of tones that'll tell you if your call has failed. There are two tones you'll need to know. Firstly, busy tone. When you're trying to contact a central, it may be that there are already too many subscribers locked on. You'll then get busy tone. Use your SSA map to find another central. Or if you have a problem, dial 990 through the busy tone and the operator will give you assistance. Hello, Twitch. Yes, this is SCRA terminal user. Um, I can't seem to lock onto the central I've got contact to. Could I have a, another CTN, please? OK, 015. Roger, thanks very much. Now you're able to cope with busy tone, let's look at another tone that you might encounter. If the system can't recognize you, or isn't able to find your records, then you'll get standby tone. Let's assume that you've entered your CTN and managed to contact a central. But when you try to affiliate into Ptarmigan, you experience standby tone instead of the normal dial tone. You'll need to go back on the hook and wait for the operator to call. It could take some time to contact you, so be patient. SCRA terminal, good afternoon. 
When you're out on exercise, it's reassuring to know that if you've got a problem, assistance will always be available. There are a number of options open to you. Firstly, try your own Formation Comms OBS. Alternatively, contact the SCRA control cell, which is there to help mobile users. You can call them through Tarmigan if you can get access. But it's most likely that you're going to have to use the civilian telephone network to contact the SCRA control cell. If you've got access to Tarmigan, you need to ring your formation comms ops by dialing your four-figure formation code, followed by 560, or the SCRA control cell on this number. SCRA is a powerful communication system for the mobile subscriber. To get the best possible service from Tarmigan, there are a few points you should try and remember. Firstly, use CTNs from your SSA map to access the system. It might take some time to transfer your records, so be patient. Leave at least two seconds between calls, and when you're static, or perhaps when communications are difficult, use your elevated antenna. If you've got a problem, then seek assistance, if necessary, through the civilian network. So, make sure you always carry small change. In this part of the program, we've shown you the simple procedures you follow to set up your terminal and to access the system. In the next part of the program, we'll show you the facilities available to the SCRA user. SCRA offers the mobile subscriber a wide range of user facilities across the battlefield. The most obvious is the facility which allows subscribers to talk directly to each other. To make a call, simply go off hook and wait for the dial tone. Dial the wanted subscriber's seven-digit number. And to answer, all he has to do is go off hook. But there are another two tones with which you should be familiar. The first is Busy Tone, which tells you that the subscriber is engaged. The second is Number Unobtainable, which tells you that the subscriber has either not joined or has left the system. When your status lamp flashes, you're just one of many terminals being served by a central with only one channel available. This is known as the Last Free Channel indication. If you're a routine subscriber, you'll not be able to make a call. Your only options are to either wait until the lamp stops flashing or re-affiliate through another central if the call is that urgent. Non-routine users have the facility to make a call in a last free channel situation. However, if you go off hook, you'll knock off or preempt another subscriber engaged in a lower precedence call. Once off hook, you'll need to press P or F to make a non-routine call. Non-routine subscribers also have the capacity to preempt or interrupt lower precedence calls already in progress. Let's consider a situation where two subscribers are engaged in a routine call. At some point during the call, a commander urgently needs to contact one of the subscribers. The commander initially makes a routine call, but gets busy tone. He redials the number, but then uses his priority or flash facility. The unwanted subscriber will be cut off and gets preempt tone. Meanwhile, the called subscriber will get ringing tone. The system also has the facility to connect to non-Tarmigan users. It's likely that they are non-secure. 
The system will warn you that it's not secure by giving you a non-secure warning tone. Make sure you don't discuss anything classified when you hear this tone. Good morning, Commander Spectar. Uh, Roger, yeah, we've got that grid confirmed. Yeah, I'll pass that one on. Bye. The use of the control keyer allows the subscriber to move up to five meters away from his terminal. It allows users to operate either in the front or the back of vehicles away from the equipment. The remoting cable fits simply in to the front of the CIG, while the other end is connected to the control keyer. Like all cables, make sure it's properly connected. But some users need to operate at a distance from their terminals. The use of the intercom boxes allows SCRA to be remoted up to 150 meters by lightweight cable. For personnel like forward observers and those in isolated staff cells, it's invaluable. When using the intercom facility, you'll need an operator to man the terminal and dial your calls. Yes, sir. Forward. Remember that whenever you're going to leave the system and before switching off, you'll need to de-affiliate. It's done by simply going off hook, dialing 80 and going back on hook. This will tell the system that you no longer need the service and will avoid problems on re-affiliation. Don't forget that your terminal is a VHF radio, vulnerable to EW, so comply with local MCON states. The moment your CIG rings, you're transmitting, and once off hook, your terminal radiates, regardless of the pressle switch. You must de-affiliate to achieve radio silence, and don't forget to sight your terminal away from buildings and power lines. On exercise, you might need to visit a switch to get a new PTD fill. For those issued with two PTDs, it's vital that you label them correctly and keep accurate records of all fills using your SCRA accounting form which also outlines the correct procedure. To help the mobile subscriber get the best out of the system, there are a number of publications we recommend that you read and take with you. You should make sure you've got all three of the Ptarmigan user aid memoirs, and for exercises in BAOR, you'll be issued with an SCRA user's guide that gives you an SSA map, a list of useful telephone numbers, and some general tips and guidance. And finally, no matter how good we tell you the system is, if properly used, you'll soon discover that SCRA is a flexible and versatile communication system that meets the demands of the modern battlefield. In this part of the program, we're going to summarize all the tones you've heard during the video. They are dial tone. Ringing tone. Busy tone. Number unobtainable. Standby tone. Preempt tone. Non-secure warning tone. To help you remember these tones, we've devised a test. Listen to the tone and identify it. 
We'll give you the answer after each tone. <laughs> 